antimicrobial resistance has become a major global threat and one that is growing at a worrying speed. It's estimated that by 2050, 10 million lives a year will be at risk due to antimicrobial resistance. There is a desperate need for new effective antibiotics that can compete with resistant bacteria before simple infections can no longer be treated easily and minor surgical procedures become life-threatening. So antimicrobial resistance is a term that we use to refer to the situation in which microorganisms, typically bacteria, but also viruses and parasites and fungi, have developed the ability to withstand, so resistance, to the common drugs, antimicrobials, that we use to treat the infections that they cause. And the impact, of course, of this is that it makes infections that previously were easy to treat or to prevent with antibiotics uh, difficult to prevent and difficult to treat. And this has potentially a huge impact on modern medicine because many of the treatments we take for granted, like surgery or cancer chemotherapy, really rely on effective antimicrobial agents to make them possible and safe. There are definitely pressures within general practice. Um, both to keep antibiotics working, but also there's the concerns about sepsis as well. The, the things that concern me particularly and is being highlighted at the moment is the, the, the fact that bloodstream infections are increasing. So despite us making improvements on antibiotic use, we are still seeing an increase in um, bloodstream infections and also in bloodstream infections that are resistant to key antibiotics. So the challenge is really a two, a twofold uh, at, a, at, a, at a high level. One is the sheer complexity of the problem and the other is the rate at which it's emerging. So Public Health England data tell us that in 28, 2018 there were something like 15,000 more bloodstream infections in the, in the National Health Service than in 2014 and over 4,000 more antimicrobial resistant bloodstream infections than in 2014. And the problem is complicated because antibiotics are obviously used in medicine, but also veterinary science and agriculture. And even in medical science, dealing with the problem uh, relies on science that involves diagnostics, therapeutics, understanding transmission of infection. It involves behavioural science. So how do we um, change doctors' behaviour, patients' behaviour to optimise antimicrobial use? It involves social sciences. How do we uh, get adoption of technologies and treatments uh, better in, 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 into practice? And there are very interesting ethical issues emerging about um, uh, prioritisation of an individual patient's uh, needs over society and some interesting intergenerational justice issues emerging about uh, prioritising our needs over our children or grandchildren who may not have effective antimicrobials if we don't do something about it. New classes of antibiotics haven't emerged in decades and there's concern that the lack of investment is contributing to this threat. NICE, NHS England and the Department of Health and Social Care are working together to propose options for new funding models for antimicrobials. Well, the, 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 the model we're, we're, we're sort of trialling um, is, is, is really recognising um, the, the lack of incentives for, for companies to develop antimicrobials currently. Um, so instead of paying, um, instead of paying as, as, as products are used, the idea is that we pay um, based on the, 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 the value to the NHS. So, so, so in summary, what we're trying to do is, is, is to capture the full value of um, the antimicrobials through a health technology assessment exercise um, and then to pay that value in instalments to companies over a multi-year period. A lot of the detail is still to be worked through, but the idea is, is, is that by doing that, there, there's sort of predictability um, of, 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 of revenues to companies. And if the same type of approach was taken more broadly by a you know, broader range of countries, and then together we could end up with the, the sort of pull incentives, the market pull incentives that, that would stimulate investment in antimicrobials. Because that's the key really is that some new antibiotics will be appropriate to almost put on the shelf for a dramatic emergence of resistance and yet those companies need to um, recoup their development costs. This company in the United States within a year of launching a new antimicrobial because they couldn't recoup their investment costs um, is a real example of, of the, the, the need for this project to change the way we look at this and change the way we reimburse for new antibiotics. 
Inappropriate prescribing and an overuse of antibiotics in recent years means they've become less effective. This has led to the emergence of so-called superbugs. We spoke to Nina, who's been living with a resistant infection and will need to take antibiotics for the rest of her life. I think it's important um, to share my story because, like, I am actually living with antibiotics um, and I think if I can help other people knowing that, you know, all right, it's not perfect life, but you can have a fairly good life, um, even though you're on all this medication, it affects you, but, you know, there is help and support out there if, if you need it. Um, I was told that um, I was quite a rare case and there wasn't many people um, on the setup that I'm on. Um, that scared me as well to think that there wasn't many people like me out there. But um, the more information uh, I look online and stuff like that, uh, there are other, there are other people out there, and it does it does put you at ease to know that. So I think if I can help other people, then that is really what I'd like to do now. Um, you know, I've not got much choice, this is my life, so if I can help others then, yeah, that would be great. So I think, you know, the main main thing is, is to be aware of, of how important antibiotics are uh, for their research. Um, you know, to find new antibiotics, because at the end of the day, um, they are my life now, they are keeping me alive. And I don't know how long for, I don't know how long they're going to keep fighting my infection for, but um, my life is in their hands and there's nothing I can do about it but hope that new ones are found and that I can live a bit longer than I hope to. NICE has published guidance and advice to help manage common infections and tackle antimicrobial resistance. The guidelines offer evidence-based antimicrobial prescribing information for all care settings. They focus on bacterial infections and appropriate antibiotic use. The guidelines can be very helpful then to identify the people, so either at that end the really high risk people who are most likely to benefit from antibiotics um, and most at risk of an antibiotic resistant infection. And then at the other end of the spectrum you've got the lower risk people. But I suppose the, the problem with general practice is people very rarely fall into those black and white um, scenarios and in between you've got this sort of more challenging area of decision making and, and so that's where the guidelines come in to try and clarify who's, who's most likely to benefit from antibiotics. For more information on our antimicrobial prescribing guidelines, visit our website at nice.org.uk. We'll also be sharing the link at the bottom of this video.